Good afternoon, everyone. This is Queenie Clem with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews, and I am your literary ambassador. And today, I have an author that is crafting words, connecting people, and communicating to the masses. Welcome to my channel, author Joy Massingill. Massingberg, excuse me. You're fine, you're fine. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. How you doing? How you doing? Wonderful on this great Friday. <laughs> okay, tell us a little about yourself. Well, I, as everybody knows, I am an author, but I'm also a speaker. That's where you get that communicating to the masses. I consider myself a bridge. Uh, if you go and you'll start seeing my my uh, website be updated with things about my diversity talks that I do. Um, I believe that I'm, God created me to be this weaver ant. So if you ever go and you look up what weavers, weaver ants do, they build bridges. They link their bodies together yeah. and they build these bridges. So I come in and I help people communicate their feelings, whether it be in relationships, if you're looking for, I write romance. So uh, I tell everybody, that's an art to that communicating. Mm -hmm. with um, with our counters to make some great relationships. So like I said, in diversity and then just um, writing and communicating love, I feel like in the way that God would have it to be. So that's just a little bit of what I do. I wear many, many hats. I can't even begin to tell you how many hats that I wear. I work for a CPA by day. I run my husband's trucking business. So uh, he's a pastor, so I'm a first lady. What else? If it's out there, I think I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us about the joyful moments of joy. Yes, I love. That has become a first love. It really has. Joyful moments with joy is where uh, it started as Facebook Live. Me want to just sit down and give people nuggets, right? Mm -hmm. Then we went YouTube. I kept hearing back from the ladies who read romance. That's my target audience. Ladies who read romance with this, I tell them deep down inside, I believe that you're looking for love, but maybe you just don't know how to identify it. And I take that show on the platform of Wisdom from the Ant and Psalms 119, and I just spread nuggets and just knowledge wanting people to get those tools that they might be missing mm -hmm. so they can enjoy relationships. That is one thing I feel like it's a gift from God that I get to enjoy a relationship of love because I'm known for, being, uh, for having married a man I did not love, but we will celebrate 27 years of marriage in mm -hmm. July. Yes. So, yeah, so I married a friend and he knew I did not love him. So that's another whole story. So I guess if you was just to just put that in one sentence, I want people to connect with me so they can experience their own joy. That's what I do with Joyful Moments with Joy. And where can we find Joyful Moments with Joy? Where? That is YouTube. They can subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the Joy K. Massenberg. Just go to the YouTube and put in my name and spell that M-A-S-S-E-N-B-U-R-G-E. -S -S -E -E. Okay. Now, uh, can we talk about CBLR and what it means to you? Wow. Christian Book Lovers Retreat. <laughs> I tell you, those ladies, what, Vanessa Miller Pierce, um, there's the, my, um, what, Riley, Vanessa Riley, uh, Rhonda McKnight, um, Pat Simmons. I know I'm starting to miss some. There's more there. Uh, what's my main girl? That um, Angela. Angela, yes. Now, you know, Angela is my just spirit mate. I love her enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. I love her love. That is a place where readers and authors come together to me in just great fun, what they say, fellowship and books, plenty of books. I love them. Last year was my first year and I told them I am hooked. How can I serve? I love Christian Book Lovers Retreat. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Okay, now let's talk about your books, A Heart Surrender and A Cry for Independence. You can tell us about each one of them and you can read, a, read out of them. Okay, great. Well, I'll tell you, A Heart Surrendered, it's a, this is my play on The Rich Young Ruler. The Rich Young Ruler uh, 
what he asked him to just that one thing, right? Give up your money and follow after me. Mm -hmm. I believe everybody has that one thing that they're hanging on to. And this particular book, um, it's at a time in her life where God is asking her to repent of that one night. And she's like, look, even Queen Esther had her night. <laughs> mm -hmm. She don't see anything wrong. She doesn't regret it. You didn't give me, you didn't give me a this thin, fine body. You didn't give me my brother's talent. So I had one night. So what? But anyway, that one night is coming back up into her mm -hmm. life with her ex. So that's a play off the rich young ruler. If she'll give up that one thing, she'll be surprised at what else God has, you know, has in store mm -hmm. for her. That's that story. And then you have a cry for independence. Now, this is my July 4th special. Um, it is, it's um, Tammy Morris cries wolf. Some cry uh, wolf, but Tammy Morris cries independence. So what is that? It's a playoff of she's, she's already had the bad relationship. She's the baby mama and the baby's daddy's trying to come back into her life after she's made all these mistakes. That's all right. I don't want what you're bringing me. Only thing I need is my independence. I've got a job now. I can take care of myself. I don't need nobody. But Q has another thing. My take on, there are still good men out there who might have made mistakes, but they're fighting for their families. And this was worth a second chance. So, yeah, I'm pretty proud of that story. Okay. Would you like to read from I tell you what, let's read from an uh, excerpt from a, uh, my latest. It's the newest, so that's the one I'm going to do. Uh, a Heart Surrender. Arms laden with two grocery bags, Sharonda struggled to open the door. She entered the kitchen from the garage. Let me take that. Carl Ray lifted the damp sack with the ice cream before she could warn him. The bottom gave, sending groceries to the floor. Sharonda scrambled to collect candy, cheesy puffs, and random chocolates. What are you doing in the kitchen? Carl Ray placed the tub of homemade vanilla in the sink and returned to gather more items. I heard the garage door and I wanted to see if you needed any help. They both reached for the cookie dough and raised their heads at the same time. Ouch! She rubbed her Be careful. I'm going to stop helping before you have to visit the hospital. He held her gaze. I'm sorry. Did he refer to the head bump somehow? She didn't think so. She stabbed everybody. My sister. She crossed to the fridge, placed the dough on the shelf, and stuffed her snacks into the bottom drawer. Your mother was tired. Your dad escorted her to rest. Janice went to change clothes. You two have plans, a date. She pivoted to leave. Don't mind me. Let me get out of here so you and Janice can have your privacy. Good night. She glanced at the closed refrigerator door, then headed across the kitchen. Sharonda, wait. What can I do to fix things between us? I hate. Don't. She you don't talk. She stepped back to avoid contact. If you want to say you hated kissing me, Sharonda swallowed the lump forming in her throat. If you want to say you hated telling me how beautiful I was, this touch, she shook her head. No. Sharonda crossed her arms. His fingers kneaded the tops of her shoulders as he pulled her to his chest. Carol's strong, Carl's strong embrace and the familiar spice seduced her arms to fall limp at her sides. He stroked her ponytail. You deserved more. Bryce, the reality of her future caused her to push away. I didn't have any remorse then, I don't now. He winced. She stepped around Carl Ray on her way to the refrigerator, snagged her treats, then ripped open the chips. She stuffed two in her mouth at once. Sharonda, she spun around to face him and wiped cheesy fingers on her pants. Good night, she held up the puffs. Like you, I've got a date. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's an excerpt from A Heart Surrender. 
Okay. All right. Um, what do you do when you're not writing? When I'm not writing, if I don't have those grandbabies, oh, Miss Queen, that is my favorite thing to do. You got to understand, I book writing into my schedule every day, but Wednesdays, because that's the days that I provide critiques back for my critique partners, where I read over their stuff and give them feedback. And Sundays, I clear my schedule because every Sunday after church, I get my four grandbabies after church. And that's our time. We come home. I have all kinds of toys in my backyard, water play. My grandbabies are four all the way down to uh, 11 months. My hands are full. That's what mm -hmm. I love to do when I'm not working, working. Every now and then I read, you know, I get, if I finish a project, like I'm working a deadline right now, um, um, I'm, I've already promised myself, if I, Joy, get all your edits done, get this book out of your hands, you've had it too long, get that out of your hands on the 29th, I'll schedule a week of just reading. And when I tell you I read, I'll read up to two books. I don't read a book in a day. So um, I'll schedule a week of just reading every day, just to have fun and just to relax and Mm -hmm. let that wake up but yeah I love to read and I love my grandbabies <laughs> what will readers learn from your stories because my struggle has been so hard I'm a PK kid I'm number six I was born to pastor Henry Blackman and missionary uh, or, or evangelist because not missionary like they say mission fields but in our church background, they used to just call them the missionaries. missionaries but, yeah. uh, you know, so when I was in that kind of setting, I got to see a lot of stuff, you know? Everybody was coming in and out or talking to my dad and my mom. So I was a jaded PK kid. So because I, after, um, it's such a, it's a long story, but I'm trying to keep it short so I won't run, run over your time. But now that I know what love really is because I fought it so long, I was like, it's not real. People just lie, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew my own father. Uh, he was my hero. But when he fell in front of me, it just jaded my view on what, um, it jaded my view on what real love was. I tell everybody, uh, I was 10 years old. When my father in front of me, I saw the other woman. And my hero at that time, fell before my eyes and my words even then was um good girls lose where I thought being good was great but in that moment I was like here it is I thought you love my mama and she's one of the good girls it doesn't pay to be a good girl so after that I became I did anything and everything that he had ever preached or taught I did the opposite so my stories when I write them you will always have a pastor or a pastor's kid in one of my stories because I feel like we have a different type of hurt but I want, like, I work, God brought me through that. And now I just, I get to live a life of, my husband loves me, he adores me. And I'm not just saying that it's a gift. I never deserved it, but I know God put him in my life to help me get through that so I could mm -hmm. come back into that relationship with him. I feel like I have to share that with the world because I believe there's women out there that have my view that all men are are horrible and you can't trust nobody and love is not real you just get yours and get out i'm ministering to those women so yes there's always these lessons beyond the wounds so mine generally have a forgiveness uh line in there mm -hmm. it's going to have a line of a true walk love you and god first the way he made you and created you mm -hmm. so that you can experience um the authentic plan of love that God had for you. That's what you're going to get from my books. Healing. Okay. Wow. What has been the greatest accomplishments thus far as a writer? The greatest accomplishments as a writer. I would have said getting the book on the shelf, but so many things have happened since then. I would say one of my greatest accomplishments as of today, last week, um, I don't even know if it's been a whole week yet. You know, they announced that I am now an official board member. They announced it, but I started working with them at the beginning of January. I am an executive board member of um, American Christian Fiction Writers. That's an organization I've been a part of for Ooh, more than five wow. years. 
And so um, I am excited. I really am. Because when I tell you it's important to me to be a bridge, I can't wait to get in there and work. And we begin to see some bridges come together, linking up like we need to do across cultural lines, across all kinds of diversity lines. I'm just excited to be there and to serve. Um, it was just awesome. It was awesome that they even reached out to me. I never thought, you know, when I started from the level of just becoming a member and then serving as a chaplain uh, for two years in my local chapter, and then I became a president of my own uh, uh, I was a founding president right here in East Texas, that writing group. And then they contacted me and said, we don't have anybody uh, on our board from the president level. Would you consider uh, representing from that level, having gone through every level in our organization and serving? So I'm also a link between the ground and the executive board. Just so that has been phenomenal because I love people. I believe my writing has just put me in some rooms and in some circles to be connected with people I never would have been connected with before. Wow. Hold that thought. What are your thoughts on book reviews, whether they're good or bad? Love it. Need the feedback. Uh, my, biggest th my biggest pet peeve, though, if you're going to leave a review, whether bad or good, tell us why. We, um, as an author, I need the feedback. But if you just say, oh, it was a, it's a one. Why was it a one? You know, and you understand? Because, I mean, I've seen reviews left by people that said, oh, it had a Christian message, but it was Christian fiction. So, you know, you have to think about all those things, you know. Yeah. Even when I'm leaving a re review personally, if mine is below a three, I will contact the author. And I will say, this is the this is what, and that's just me personally, because I guess maybe because I know how hard years sometimes go into these books. And I know what a review can do mm -hmm. to your ratings because so much stems on uh, these ratings. And sometimes it might've just been a book that's really not your type of read, you know? So I, I take that very serious, what I leave. But I tell everybody, please leave a review. We need to hear for uh, how the, we need to hear your responses. But at the same time, let's be fair. Let's make sure we put enough information on why it was good. So then, look, everybody needs that little push, you know, when you work so hard. But even if it was bad, like me, I want to get better. If you look at a cry for independence to a heart surrender, I'm steady learning. You know, so we need that feedback just to grow. But that would be my biggest thing. And like I said, me, myself, if it's a pretty low rating, I will call them first or message them, inbox them and say, do you want me to put this? Um, that's just joy. I, I, but I still feel like, let me give you the feedback whether I post it or not. Oh, okay. okay. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm yeah. not telling people to tell me what to say on my review. It's just, do you want me to post it or not if it's less than a three? Three. Okay. Tell us about your publishing journey so far. Woo! I tell everybody, it may be Okay, no, I'm not going to say, I, neither one of them are easy. Because, uh, you know, I'm indie pub. Uh, uh, Cry for Independence is indie pub. And I'm traditionally uh, published. Nothing, nothing is easy. It's all hard work. So let's, let's start there from even the beginning of where you're pitching and they're telling you to get an agent. Because if, you, if your dream is to get with a big house like Tyndall or HarperCollins or, you know, Bethany House, those are agents. You have to have an agent to get there. Okay. So even at that level of going and being rejected, um, you think you're writing, but you thought you had it and you get there just for them to tell you, Hey, you don't have the mechanics. You don't have your head hopping. You still, you know, just all these different mm -hmm. technical things that you don't have. You have to be able to overcome that kind of feedback, especially when you've worked so hard, you rewrite the story two and three times. So I would just say, please keep going. You keep, keep learning, even from the rejections. My agent to this day, you know, I will go, uh, like I said, I've been going to ACFW uh, for the past five years. I started that way because of Francine Rivers, which is my all-time uh, favorite Christian author, because she, I started with her with a redeeming love. You know, I was working in the Christian bookstores. It was the first Christian novel I had ever read. And it was an awesome read. So um, I started pitching there. And it's funny how I remember... Linda Glass of Heartline is my agent. I remember when I pitched to her, 
she was just like, mm, you have these issues, you're not ready. I was like, okay. But she sat down with me, she began to just circle, point out different things that, that I needed to go home to work on. I came back the next year. I pitched to her again. And I tell everybody, do your homework. Uh, go to some of these uh, sites where they're telling you how to pitch to an agent, right? And I came back and I was like, before, people want to know you and where your heart is before you start even pitching your story. And I remember telling her, I'm coming back to you, whether you see anything in me or not, but I want to show you that what the, you taking out the time to even list the things I needed to work on, I want to show you that I went home and worked on it. Mm -hmm. That was my opening. Right. And so then I pitched the same story that she rejected the year before. But this time she was just like, OK, I'm willing to take another look at it. So she, we go down and she takes me. She uh, contacts me. She was just like, you know what? We walk around the conference and she says, I've been looking for you. And I said, OK. She said, you made my day. She says, because we work hard. Sometimes people don't know. People get upset with us when we reject, reject them. She says, but you made me know that me doing my job, it wasn't for nothing. And so she said, can I take you to coffee? Get a coffee. I was like, sure. She was just like, stay in touch with me. Anyway, th th that was like year two. You got to understand, I still don't have an agent. I'm still being rejected. Still being rejected. I had somebody, uh, Karen Wittemeyer told me, write another book. Go outside your series and write another book. That's how this book came out. It's, I've got a series that still hadn't sold. I'm still working on that series. This book was a side book that Karen Wittemeyer said, get out the series and write something else. I said, okay. I'm in there, my uh, critique group, I travel to uh, Arlington, uh, which is a two and a half rock, hour drive one way to be with critique group. Did that for three years, right? Sitting up on the Lena Nelson Dooley. So she's saying, hey, Joy, aren't you ready to be, you know, be published? And I was like, yeah. Anyway, she had gotten a call and they were saying, do you know of any new writers you know, that, that are out there? Because we, we're looking for some new work. Mm -hmm. And so she said, uh, I've got a girl in my critique, critique group. So she passes it on to her agent, who then passes my, my book manuscript on to guess who? I get a call from Linda Glass, the same person, but she's got another book. So it was funny because that next conference, she didn't come to our conference. So I wasn't able to pitch to her again. But anyway, that's where our relationship started. So that agent, all the way, she gets the book. Um, just from going to my chapter meetings, uh, my, the vice president said, have you ever been to publishing in color? So I've never heard of it. She says, well, they are out there and they're, they're looking, it's for own, it's for, uh, own voices, you know, voices of color. I said, no, I've never heard of that. So I went to, I'm going to make sure I'm saying it, Newark, New Jersey, Newark. I think that's how they said. Yeah. And, um, traveled out there and I met Edwina Perkins, did not know. Uh, she's the acquisitions editor for Harambe. Harambe. Harambe was brand new and they were looking for authors. It was funny though, I didn't go and pitch to her. I'm sitting around, I tell everybody, why are you in this journey? Just have a relationship with people. I'm sitting around making friends. I didn't even know this woman is an editor sitting amongst us while we're just talking and laughing, going back and forth. Everybody's like, what do you write? What do you write? What do you write? And we're just talking. She's sitting over here, she hadn't said anything. And so I looked at her and I said, you're the only one not talking. Let's make sure we don't exclude you. What do you write? And because she's an editor who also writes, she told us what she wrote, still not announcing who she is. So we're having a good time. And in the end, then she says, I'm the editor for blah, blah, blah. So I have pitched to the agents that my, uh, um, I had pitched to the different publishing houses that my agent had wanted. And because I just liked her and we had this connection, I said, I'm just going to check out her list and see if has anyone pitched to her. I went there, pitched to her. It was, she had one slot left, pitched to her, and her words back to me. I could tell she understood my story, you know? And uh, there was an opportunity that the bigger houses asked for it. To, you know, I had a bigger house that asked for it too. But I asked my agent, I said, can you just trust me on this? I really feel a connection with Edwina. Mm -hmm. I know who Rombie's new, but I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of that building block. And so uh, my agent, she said, are you sure? It's my job to tell you. If you go with the bigger house, you get a signing bonus, you get some stuff, whether or not any of your books sell, you know? If you go with the smaller house, 
you don't get that up front. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to grind. You want to do a little bit more because they're smaller. But have you just ever believed? I hope writers, as they're going through their writer's journey, I hope they've already written down why they write. You need to know why you write so that you're making decisions that you can live with, you know, because it's not easy. So even though I had to work harder in this traditional way, because it's what I believe in and I was a part of something I believed in, it's been worth it every step of the way. So that's part of my, like I said, there's so much more to it, but I know you don't have all day. So um, that is part of my journey in traditional publishing. Okay, what are you working on right now? All right, so now that I have learned so much, and I would tell everybody, Edwina, oh my goodness, she is no joke. She will, I told her, you know, and this is country, this is just me being funny, but she will put her foot in your neck and make you deliver, right? So I believe now that I have acquired so much more, uh, I've gone back to that series, that beginning series that I had. It's called the Wounded Lamb series. I also got in with uh, Rachel Houck, who is my writing coach, and we have revised that, um, that series. And I know it's good, but as you know, when you start something as a new writer, I don't believe it got the chance that it should have because I was a new writer. So I'm going back and picking up that series, um, and that's the one that we're going with. So I have to turn that in on the 29th, and then after the 29th, then Rachel gives a thumbs up then uh, my agent is then going to repitch that to some of the, uh, she's going to repitch that. She's going to run with it. Oh, wow. I'm excited. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How can readers get in touch with you and find your books? Great. I would tell them first, just go to my website. I have a link there. So that's the www.joykmassenburg with an E, M-A-S-S-E-N-B-U-R-G-E. Go to my website there. It will take you to the links. You can see my books. Uh, but my books are everywhere. You can get on walmart.com. You can go to Ken, um, Amazon, uh, LPC, Lighthouse Publishing of the Carolinas. You can go there to get the book. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to add before we close? I would say this, please. If you have been called to write, whatever your God-given calling is, as I tell everybody, do it. You don't have to know everything. What I have learned is when I started, God has supplied everything that I needed. And so the women that have come back to me and said, oh my goodness, that helped me. That helped me reach out to my father and ask for forgiveness. And now I'm living, I'm experiencing love. Don't think about yourself. I tell everybody, don't be selfish. Share your gifts. Don't take any books to the grave with you. They've already, the grave already has too many. So that would be my thing, Miss Queenie. Two, I would tell them, connect with me. I love the ladies. Connect with me at Joyful Moments with Joy. That goes up every Thursday at six. Check out my YouTube. Every fourth Thursday of the month, I go live. I give away money. I give away books and prizes just because I want the community to just be tight-knit and let's grow. I tell the singles to come, the married to come, the young and the old, because guess what? We're learning together and we need the wisdom of the maturity in the group. And the maturity of the group meets the fire of the young people to keep our own little engines, you know, roaring and just enjoying this life that God has given us. So that would be my closing statement to all of you out there. All right. Thank you so much for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for having me, Miss Queen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. With that being said, and all minds are clear, this is Queenie Clem with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews. Happy reading. Bye, y'all.